Look at that beautiful workmanship. Incredible, you know, scenes that you would think could have come from Pompeii or, or the Mediterranean, and yet it's local gold and local stones. Burial number six, which you will see at the end of the exhibition, had a crown, a princess's crown that was really remarkable. And I'll tell you the story of this crown because it's really a good victor story. So this came from burial number six, last burial that was found. It was February 1979, freezing cold in northern Afghanistan. And um, Victor found this crown on the head of, of the princess. He said, wow, fantastic. He took it, put it in the tent where all the rest of the treasures were found. And he went off and did his business, came back and the crown was gone. Well, as he tells me, he went a little crazy. He said, how do you lose a crown, right? This is the most important find in the whole, in the whole uh, excavations. And uh, so it turns out that this is actually a true nomadic crown. It's collapsible. You can take the, the tree pieces on the top apart, and there's a photo of this downstairs taken apart, and the princess could have folded it up, put it in a pouch, and put it in a little bag, and galloped away. And this is what one of his assistants had done. They had put it in a pouch in the tent, and they found it. Victor was very relieved when they found it. But for me, it's an icon of this incredible collection, nomadic, beautiful artistry, locally made, all in northern Afghanistan. Now, all these artifacts come from burial number six. We inventoried some 1,200 objects from this particular burial. Well, here we are in the basement of the bank vault. We've now inventoried, you know, uh, 1,200 objects. We're extremely tired. Everybody in the basement of this bank vault is starting to smoke, as you see. They're like, you can't imagine what it's like to be completely enclosed with all this. So, you know, here's the deal. We have 19,000 more objects to go. And I'm not gonna show you 19,000 more objects, but I will show you just a few from one other burial. I'll show you a few objects from the mail. We call him the warrior because he's got um, various weapons. We don't know if he's a warrior, but he was six feet tall. He was magnificent. He was the one male uh, amongst five females, really magnificent. Here's a couple of things that really astonished us. These boot buckles that he was wearing, I knew from that 1990 article that Victor had published in National Geographic, and I had looked at these, and I said, these are definitely Chinese. Look, in these two boot buckles, you see a, a depiction of a chariot, and there's a man in the chariot. It has a parasol. He's got very Chinese-looking uh, robes, and the chariot's being pulled by two dragons. But when we actually held these artifacts and looked at them, we realized they're not made in China. It's local Afghan gold and local turquoise that are decorating. So all of these collections, they're importing ideas and they're making the objects there. Here's my favorite piece from this burial. I like it. It's the hilt of the dagger. You'll see it in burial number four, the warrior. I like it because it's a Siberian motif. It's a bear. I, I like to think that it, it reminds me of Victor's himself, you know, the big Russian bear, and the bear is eating grapes. I, I think it's a great piece. Um, so that's what I have to show you from these burials. And, you know, by the end of three months of inventory, we had found all 21,000 pieces of gold. That's the good, one of the good news stories. You know, we found every single piece that Victor had found. We counted it, recounted it, and it was all there. 21,000 pieces, we were able to recreate what those six individuals looked like. There's the male in the, in, in the middle, uh, five females around it. It was fabulous. At the end of this, you know, we invited President Karzai to come look at this gold. There he is. We put all the gold on the table. And for me, this was particularly satisfying. He looked at the data sheets instead of the gold, right? <laughs> yes, great. He loved the inventory. So, you know, I have to admit, after doing three and a half months of inventory in the basement of a bank vault, you know, locked in, I was exhausted. We had 18 people working with us. We were all so tired. And not only that, I was out of supplies. I was out of money. I was ready to go home. And um, then Mr. Masudi came up to me and said, you know, you did a really great job with this inventory. You know, um, you can't go home. 
He said, we've got more boxes for you. Ugh. I actually did have to go home. I had to get more money. I had to get more supplies. And believe me, it was, you know, like an angel. National Geographic and National Endowment for Humanities both said, okay, go back. And um, to, to sweeten the pot a little bit, Mr. Masudi said, I'll tell you what. You know, I'll make our life easier. We won't use a circular saw to open the boxes anymore. I've got another method. And so we went back to Kabul, and he introduced me to, oh, here are the boxes that we put them into. He introduced me to what I consider to be Afghanistan's criminal number one. <laughs> this guy who could open the boxes with a bent nail in about five minutes. He gave me this big toothless smile. I paid him $5 and I said, please take him back to where he was before because this is not good security, right? <laughs> well, when we opened up the second set of boxes, you know, it was something that amazed all of us. It was totally, totally unexpected. As I mentioned to you, the, the Kabul Museum was bombed. It lost its roof. After it was bombed, it was looted. After it was looted in 2001, the Taliban came, you know, when they smashed the giant Buddhas, they also smashed sculpture. Anything that was left in the museum was smashed. So for the whole world, we thought the collections that had been in the Kabul Museum were gone, right? Thank goodness we had the gold. But when we opened the second set of boxes, it was amazing. The best pieces of the Kabul Museum were there in these boxes unknown to me, unknown to many people in that room. It was amazing. This large ivory uh, sculpture, which is on display downstairs, one of three, was preserved in these boxes. How could it be? It was amazing, not only to me, but the Afghans around the world. We looked in the guidebooks and we said, this object should have been smashed. It should have been destroyed. Here it was. More ivories came. These are all from the ancient site of Begram, again, 2,000 years old. Many of these pieces were wrapped in newspaper, in pink toilet paper, in these anonymous boxes that had no, no description, no labels on them. They just opened up these boxes. It was like Christmas every day. What's next? Right? These came from a merchant's warehouse that had been found in 1937, had been on display in the Kabul Museum up through the 80s, and then disappeared. Here they were. Not only that, but fragile plaster medallions, so fragile that if you simply blew on them, the plaster would sort of disappear. But there they were in these boxes. It was amazing. I kept asking them, how could it be that these treasures were saved? These pieces, this piece in particular, was on a UNESCO webpage sa saying, this piece is stolen from the Kabul Museum. But here it was. Finally, when we, we opened these glass vials, which are drinking cups, 2,000 years old, three of them are on display downstairs, we finally understood what had happened. Some brilliant person I don't know if it was the museum director or the president of the country. Somebody knew in 1988 that in the next five years, the country was going to fall into chaos. And secretly, in the middle of the night, they had taken all the masterpieces from the Kabul Museum out of the museum and put them in boxes and hid them away. And this is what we were opening up. And finally, we could tell the good news story. About 95% of the masterpieces of the Kabul Museum were saved by these people. They're heroes. This is incredible. They saved it. You know, the museum was destroyed. We thought everything was destroyed, but they saved it. Wow. It was amazing.